Hey, what's up guys? It's Zoe from Low Expectations and this is my short guide to Mythic, Halls of Atonement and Shadowlands. I'll be going through each boss in detail and we'll be looking at some of the notable ads within the dungeon. So let's get started. Halls of Atonement is a four boss dungeon in Revendreth on the east side of the map. The four bosses in order are Halkius, Echelon, Elise and Lord Chamberlain. To activate the first boss, you'll need to kill three mobs called Shards of Halkius that are pointed to here. Here's a floor plan of the starting area once you enter. The three Shards of Halkius are situated here, here, and here. You'll find Halkius here. It's worth knowing that the Loyal Stoneborn shown can be turned friendly by a player who's chosen Venthia Covenant. They're dotted around the dungeon, so keep your eyes out. There are also large groups of gargons through the dungeon which hit tanks really hard. Make sure you soothe, kite and CC these mobs to help your tank manage them. The first boss is Halkius the Sinstain Goliath. He has a surrounding circle every player must be in throughout the encounter. If you move outside of the circle for too long you'll be repeatedly feared. The boss does a tank slam ground effect and throws debris at other members which leave patches. Make sure you place these patches tactically so you have space to move for the following mechanic. After a short while, the boss will emit four beams through the circle which rotate and can change direction. You cannot touch these otherwise you take large amounts of damage. Tanks should move the boss to a patch-free area before this is cast so people can traverse around the boss safely. The next boss, Echelon, pops out of these doors at the top of the stairs so be ready. Echelon's encounter revolves around six adds which spawn and need to be destroyed after death. This is kind of similar to the adds in Waycrest. Once you DPS down the mobs, they explode and turn to stone. They become immune to damage and start regenerating. All players get a debuff slowing them and turning them to stone, but only one will be targeted with the stone shattering leap. If the healer or DPS can dispel curses, dispel the slow on the player being leapt on so they can easily focus the leap onto the regenerating adds. Regardless, the leap must go onto the adds. This will permanently get rid of the adds till a new batch spawns. The boss will also throw a puddle under a random player, so move out of this. It's a fairly simple boss, just make sure you get those dispels going out and destroy those adds, otherwise you'll get overwhelmed. The next boss is High Adjudicator Elise. Her bolt of power and volley of power can be interrupted. Bolt is a single target, volley hits three players. Elise summons a spectral ghost. This was fairly broken on beta and would randomly switch targets, but I'm fairly certain it focuses just one and chases. Do not let this ghost hit you. Kite the ghost next to one of the four lanterns in the boss room to get rid of it. The ghost does pulsing damage in an eight yard radius around it, so don't stand near it. There's not much to this fight aside the ghosts, but they do hit hard, so be careful. Through the mirror to your right is the room of a thousand adds. Make sure you ignore the aggressive mob and focus on DPSing down all the passive dudes as they transform after a short while into these little gribbly dudes that chase you. Kill the mini boss and then proceed to the last boss. Lord Chamberlain is the final dungeon boss. Throughout the encounter he throws around these four statues in front which you need to dodge. Telekinetic toss is where he pulls the statues across the room at targeted members. He also does a frontal called Unleash Suffering, so make sure you avoid this. Make sure you look at what direction these statues are aimed at so you can get an idea of the path. After a short while, he will beam and pull all four statues into the center, then blast them outwards. This is called Telekinetic Onslaught and Repulsion. After this, he will do Ritual of Woe, which is where he beams these statues again, but these need to be soaked like the third boss in Temple of Sethralis. Stand between the boss and the statue. These abilities will continue cycling until the boss is dead. This guide was made during beta, so the boss and trash are subject to change. If there are any changes you've noticed, please just let me know in the comments. This dungeon is short and sweet, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like on live. Thank you for watching my guide, and be sure to like and share, it really helps us out. You can find me on Twitch at 411 Games. I'll be making new dungeon guides, so if you'd like to be notified for the next one, subscribe. Take care, bye guys!